I'll sing the show. Do you like it? Do you have Tiger? Hello, uh, my name is Jesus Gonzalez Torres. Um, yeah, uh, so I've been, I've been waiting the show for, for this series, one, 18 on one walk, for a number of years, like four, three years or so, off and on. So it's been in my head for a while. And then off of that, I started doing some cardboard portraits, which is the golden one, and other ones, my drones that I've done since then. Uh, so this show, this, uh, this installation altogether, has been in my head for a while. So um, I don't know. I really, I could talk about it forever. Uh, so if you guys have any questions, I'll probably talk and could, could extend into a conversation about things. The, uh, the song. So, Thieves in the Light is, is a Tyler Parker Moore Steph song, and then the lyrics are from, um, the words are from, uh, I don't know what they Yeah. Um, so, what do you, like, what's the, you know, whatever, not this, not that, yeah. mean anything specific, but I mean, like, is there, you can think about this for a while, like, how this song? It does. I mean, I, mean uh, I had a solo show last year in the Berger program, um, and the title of it was Brown and Beige, uh, A Finite Infinite. So I, I feel like this is definitely, I don't know, it's, it's definitely extend, it's an extension of that conversation altogether. So I've been thinking about, uh, within this reference in the song, or specific songs, um, well, Thieves in the Light, Thieves in the Night really is the title of the song, so I believe what's the facts are. And it's, it's, uh, it's references uh, Blue Skies or Blue Eyes by um, Morrison. Yeah, so it's a really, like, it's a really interesting song because it, it provokes it and, and, and instigates just um, progression altogether within the individual self and within the community, within the uh, uh, society altogether. So I kind of just changed it to light because it references, of course, portraits and monochromes. And then the Thomas A. Dorsey, it's, it's a hymn, it's an old gospel song. That my Haley Jackson is song to Betty Smith to multiple, multiple people. Uh, so, of course, if you read it, I feel it has a, a good parallel to uh, Thieves in the Night and to the portraits altogether, and my way of thinking within portraiture and, and figures in society, in small society, or what have you. So, uh, yeah, it's been very, the series, uh, I did landscapes, colorful landscapes for a while, and then I kind of got sick of it. And I switched over to portraitures and wanted to do much shot monochrome portraitures, having no idea what, it, what they were about or what it was going to be about. And, um, and the initial like, interest was the, the morals attached to the law, not so much the ethics. And from there, it sort of expanded and pulled into uh, things. Um, so that's where the song comes down. It's good to play because it's, it represents literally directly to um, an image to a portrait, to a painting, and then, um, yeah, and also, it also adds to like, the, my previous show where I'm considering uh, time, really, it's like point, preferably point A to B, which is in the song, uh, uh, and then also just like the infinite of many, many things within space. So the portraits are, to you, like a sort of finite infinite thing in terms of like, uh their function in relation to a person or in relation to the like, system or order? Well, this, this series are, it, it is, does reference uh, mugshots and it references like law altogether, but it, you know, it has a, as a process of thinking of them all together. Um, it didn't become that at all. I kind of it was disappointed with it all together. And, and it's more, at least for me, it references um, or enables uh, ways of thinking within a, system, within a system that combines certain figures and uh, delineates individuals to objects to processes and, and, and certain facts and matters. Um, so from there, like I said, I, I branched off to the carver portraits where there are, it is more about the image, and it is a bit more about the character, uh, so it, it is a challenge within the carvers at least, or it is more of a challenge of figuring out who the person is where these mugshot portraits are just uh, lost, lost souls, you know, uh, just players and numbers in a system. 
one sort of last question on that point. I mean, it makes me think of like, like I any mean, theme of redemption or something. So you do think of somehow the like the other portrait as somehow redeeming the image, redeeming image making, and then like I, like also like the idea of sentimentality in relation to the image. You know, like the touch is there in both of them. You know, like maybe one is more process oriented, or you know, but it's like where does where does where does your sentiment come in, like in making these things, and like how does investing the work with with it, like. Is there a range in that in the show as well, do you think, of like one side presenting a certain kind of investment or another side maybe more detached and more, more process or whatever, however it is for you? No, for sure. I mean, I, it was, it was, I, I, the only thought was considered to the T, you know, and um, uh, it is, it is, it's sentiment, it's more so like a, more of a, a search of value altogether. I mean, the ironic problem says to be literal and direct, but more so the value. There's a lot of space uh, in doing those, por those portraits, much of work. There's a lot of space uh, and sentiment, I suppose, within an image and with information altogether. So that's why the process itself was to make an object is, and, and is, is, a, is, it is a finite thing altogether. And you're thinking with it while you're going through it altogether. So, um, but in doing so, like, I got a lot of faith in it. So it, it, it became an overlay. The process itself was an erasure and the negation of, of the image and information um, and the transfer of things. Um, so it is a little bit of, of, of multiple figures and in the system and the format of, of portraitures and paintings and much that sort of image. Uh, where the, the ladder or the cardboard, or cardboards, it's, I mean, they're not cardboards and they're oil on cardboards, so they're not going to last, hopefully. I'm hoping they won't last, um, but they probably will. But it is more of that value again, how and what sense does one as an individual, as a viewer, or as a self carry or receive or recognize uh, from, from an image or from a cardboard or from a piece? Um, so it, it, so they, they are planned. I mean, they would, facing each other are considered you know, definitely considered. Yeah. Can you talk more about like, It, was, it wasn't as so much like a painting, because uh, that's always there, whatever that may be. It's just more so like with image and information. Um, just, I guess I'm always uh, acute to thinking to like larger scopes of like ways of uh, like civil society, way how, uh, this, how American and other American countries work and manipulate an image and, and how that be, how that be used. And, and an image, a still an image is very different from a moving image, of course, and uh, because I, I feel like it's, um, like still an image altogether is it's quite profound, but it's lost, it's, it's lost its sentiment, it's lost its value, and it's lost, um, it's not received, I feel like it's just, um, it's received, but it's received in, in, in a different way in, 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 in compared to a moving image. So that, that loss, I just maybe I lost the faith in myself and being able to recognize and being objective within within an image or within a piece or within within an object altogether because uh, uh, they're, they're important things, they're valuable things, and they reflect upon society and reflect upon an individual or the maker and all what have you. But at the same time, it's um, it is not. Society works now, or America works now, where objects are completely superficial and artificial, and and not even made to last altogether. So uh, it's comes back to the value thing: how much are you able to ac accept, recognize, um, dismiss, um, enjoy, dislike? So we can. With, so I, I was more interested in just the possibility of what the image should be. Shots and what a mushroom can be, what law can be, uh, what information, what value that holds all together. Uh, and it's, uh, it's open ended, it's open ended, it's everything you don't want to be. It was, it's, especially with the portraits, I didn't, didn't want to be that type of anyway. Of course, it's, it has to be open, everything is open ended, at least for me, and then of course the, the viewer receivers. Like, it's a given, it has to be a given. Uh, your aesthetic, my aesthetic, uh, those are just find out ways of, of, and modes of thinking and, and relating to things. Um, and I still believe it, I still think that's true. And, uh, I 
still feel that's true in not caring for an image, but you know, back and forth. Maybe a related topic. So I definitely see the work in part of this trajectory of um, the genre of portraiture. And specifically, like, I think historically, the genre of portraiture was one that had a relationship directly with the state, in which you, know, you had to like, actually visualize and embody state through a visual image, i.e. like a picture of the king, let's say. And the image of the king had to be distributed in order to like maintain the power relationships and stuff. And there's sort of something like an extension of that in this work where, or that makes sense in the 21st century, where we don't actually see the mechanisms of the state directly. We don't see like a body that um, an embody of this of power, but rather we see it through its um, techniques and you know, no shot. But what's curious to me is um, that then the choice, so I think the modern state would want to have the most detailed, articulated image of a criminal or a subject. But like you've chosen to obliterate the image of the subject. And so I'm curious what that does for that kind of uh, construction of power. I don't know. I mean, because there's a way in which maybe if you had like really detailedly um, articulated your, the subject, you, you'd be playing the role of the state. But then by like, I don't know. This is like now I'm just starting to. Right, it's criminal, right? Just like it's obliterating this identity of, of the subject. Yeah. Um, but like the king is sort of. It doesn't obliterate the person. It's just like it's still It's still a It's still a there's this romantic response within like the touch of the painting that it, it really resembles more the portraiture or the iconography of the saints. So there's this kind of like we don't when you look I, I just was in the southwest, I saw this crazy Malabro like iconography of like this the same image over and over again of these deuterian forms and they don't have this individual quality but they have this like tactile object. in a weird way that there would be a display of like, stuff. And it's like, and then you're putting this response of, um, you know, but there's no real title to it. It's just these numbers. And so it's relating back and forth that there's this romantic response and then there's this, you know, trying not to be romantic. There's a pushing and pulling between that. And I think it is really interesting, especially when you're having one wall so saturated in the next one, and that you're caught in between those two responses. Um, and it works well, it mimics the title with the, with the object as well. So I think it's, I think it's yeah, very interesting. I think it's a thing too, it's a big thing. You're saying I was really bad, you know, what you heard is the image of something. Yeah. It doesn't actually, the image is there. Yeah. What you're working with the whole is like, I don't really, you know, I guess I see it might be open-ended in a way in terms of like what the sides represent, but I do see, you know, it's like didactic is not really work, but there is there is something of a, a structure set up, you know, it's like they, they do have these these options. And I think the, the situation that Mike was talking about, like, you know, it's like that there is there is a position in, in the work. And then, you know, you talk about one to create this thing specifically. So, you know, it's like I, I worry about like the fear of didacticism is like preventing me from actually like being Specific here that you know it's like about how you think images operate in society. You know it's like obviously as viewers we're engaging in this process of interpretation that isn't sort of like prescribed by you, but uh, but in a sense it is because I think that the work is political in a, in a way that it is not like ambiguous and not left left like, to be open. You know it's actually meant to sort of like challenge like you know I mean I think, I think somehow like both Dan and Mike are correct, but I, I have trouble sort of like really sort of putting points together. I mean, I know we both agree that you're you know, like, we agree that we're right. But I, can't, <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't figure out the agreement, you know. Um. No, the, well, I, I think, um, I, 
I, I mean, it's within, I think the portrait, I don't know, within the image of the portrait, one shop or dessert. They are open-ended in, in a way, and it's, uh, it is more of a, say, how it goes to the individual perception altogether within the subject and the viewer. But, but I did want to be direct, you know, and I'm not afraid of didactic and the fear of didacticness, you know, because that's, that's, that's a given, it's a fucking given. Like, it's, it should be expected, it should be, I don't know, like, aesthetic is given, you know, individual aesthetic is given, and um, it, I, I guess it's more of a challenge or uh, within, within finding parallels of capacity um, in, the, in the subjects and within power uh, and perception, you know, and, and uh, whatever that may be for individuals, I'm not too sure, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, but at W, I mean, I think especially with like, the title and within the, the the listing of the song, it's it's it's, it's pretty direct, and I wanted it to be direct, and and from there it can branch off into things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's very much. No, 
couple of the, it, it didn't, it didn't, it did it didn't, because the end is always going to be the end, you know, just like that, just like, uh, I don't know, anything really, it always ends, you know, it's it just, I guess I, I feel like it, uh, well, I don't know, I think, I, I mean, I consider, consider like time and place, or no, sorry, um, place and space altogether, where place is very, an interesting location or, or climate to be in, but it's really, it, it, it's, it's tied down to a location and demographic and, and time as well, but space is more infinite and something that we've never uh, fathom, you know. And, um, and yet still as humans we still find ways to delineate that, you know, and try to encompass that and, you know, and try to kind of make formulas out of it, you know, uh, within the two. Are the monk shots specific? Are they like a uh, specific kind of crimes or uh, No, it was an array of people, like, from like movie stars to serial killers to just random people. Um, I was, I mean, I started in grad school, so I was completely theoretical on them and considered everything from like, because they were from like uh, smoking.com, smoking so it's like images from the website and then transferring the image. From that website, as you print them out, it does something to the image, of course, and I consider that, of course. Uh, and then, of course, it, it, weren't, it wasn't transferred directly to the canvas, I think, true. So that drawing itself is a, is a, a form of implementation. But in a, in, so they weren't initially, but they weren't. Um, but they know they don't reference anyone specifically at all. Where like the latter, like the cardboard's. Uh, the image was more important, and um, I stuck to the image, and, and it's there, but it's not there. It, it, they're all very porous, but again, the title like Portrait of a Woman, Portrait of a Man, so they're pretty minimal in, in, in description, but I don't know, it's, people recognize the image or the, uh, whatever it may be in various ways, so I just like that play. I mean, in a sense, like it's, it's, it's the sort of the outsourcing of the state's power to the individual, where the individual performs a sort of accusatory glance or accusatory gesture or something like that. But like, you know, it's like I feel like the, there's something more polemical about the mugshot these days, where it's like it's not necessarily functioning just this kind of archiving or this kind of like system of uh, maintains the kind of, the perpetual control of the image is now public, right? It's like we we maintain the power of Heather Locklear's mugshot, like we. We're gonna throw it back in our face, you know, because we have a voice, we put it on our blogs, or whatever. So it's like, I wonder, you know, I mean, I don't know, I wonder if your thoughts about, you know, like how much shots are being used these days and like where the individual fits in that relationship, whereas before I think the individual was very much outside, you know, or or kind of see them in the news or something. Sorry, I got excited. It's kinda of, it's kind of like uh, it was just reminded me of Andy Warhol's um Things where he has people just sit in front of the camera. What are those called? Tests. Sweet tests. Yeah, like there's not like a genre. It's not like like if you're a bride, you're supposed to be smiling in a certain way. There's not a certain way that you're supposed to look at the shot. Mm -hmm. Sorry, but that doesn't really have to do with what you mean about the transformation of the internet of mug shots. Well, I mean, Warhol's interesting because he did a lot of, you know, he did like 25 most wanted men. And, uh, and there's a relationship to the image already sort of like congealing as maybe what we understand to be now or like, the way it's going to function, whether he it or just like actually implemented it. So it's kind of weird. Yeah, this is happening when like America's most wanted is going off the air and so oh. Yeah. Well, I think that's fascinating the outsourcing. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's what? just. Did it hide everyone? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Hold on. Everybody except the killer of his child. Right. Yes. <laughs> and Waldo. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think that's, that's totally right because it's like it doesn't. It, it's not necessary anymore because we have other avenues for addressing those needs. You know, like the needs to fetishize criminals are addressed by CSI, by in fact every show on TV is either about crime or disease. You know, it's like. Uh, uh, I think we're in an interesting culture where, you know, like, I mean, crime was always, you know, I'm not, I'm not so naive as to think it's, like, novel that we, you know, put crime in front of everything, but um, the trafficking these images, I think there's something very accelerated, like, not even peculiar or odd, but... Well, celebrated too, of course. Celebrated. I mean, painting is all, you know, it's like slowing it down. I mean, it's interesting that, that the one that's kind of the redeemer is the one that's sort of, like, is made precious by its, like, erosion and the fact that, like, and the other ones are actually quite frozen in, in a kind of like, in, in the material statement, statement one, right? The King's portrait, you know, right? They're perfectly yeah. in their stable paintings, right? They're not going to rot. That was just perfect. Yeah. The, um, I, I can't remember if um, it's listed this way on your sheet um, that says cold cardboard paint. Thank you. 
history of portraiture about photography and photography about painting, and, you know, that kind of historical reference, but the white somehow really makes it oddly fresh and, and brings it to a kind of verite, you know, that the portraiture itself I think, I think doesn't do on its own. So I think the installation is really important, the relationship. How is the decision made to work in white? Or are they, do they all sort of develop in a certain way and then or do they start already from a certain point? Like the white ones, or the ones that have like, there's, there's one in the far right corner that has these like hatch marks on it. You know, it's like, you know, it's like, how, how are those things, first of all, are the white ones coming from a specific place where they differentiate the other ones when you make them? You know, or do they just eventually get to that state through a different kind of process? And then some of the more sort of like, Something like that, the hatch marks, is just more decorative, or like, where does that come from? Yeah, those hatch marks are pretty funny. Um, I don't know where they came from. And they're totally hidden, too, because if they put them anywhere else in the space, they would have been glaring, you yeah. know, because the light. No, for sure. I mean, a lot of, a lot of them have the, uh, there's a, a lot of layers. I mean, each, each one of those has, a, like, has at least, like, the image on there, but it's been removed and added at least, like, ten times. So there's a lot of history within adding the removal of the image or within the within the frame of the portrait. Um, so there's a lot of history there. I, I mean, I remember, of course, and but that was it might have been like a completely intuitive sort of thing I did in the studio one day to uh, something that I saw in an image or outside in the world that I added. You know, um, so it's 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 pretty random. Uh, within the white the white portrait itself. Um, they're, they're in the latter end of the 18. I, I started, this, they were definitely darker earlier on because it was more focused than the mugs and its specific, uh, just, again, like the moral and ethical things within the law. Yeah, but then, of course, as I've lost, as I lost interest in faith in, in, in image and information, I it come back, you know, things always come back, things always change. Uh, so, and within the whites, that was the latter end of, the, of that series where I was looking and searching for for that faith again, and for that belief, and that will more so, that like, the process, which is will, it could be anything really to believe, mm -hmm. uh, for an endpoint, for a song, you know, for... for how does that, I mean, how does, how does that, what do, you, what do you mean by that? So, so the white, is, is it about how the process, how, how the images arrived at, like, in terms of, like, instead of working towards burying, working towards bringing something out, like, how, how, how do they switch with the white? Uh, it, it probably was completely subjective, at least for me, because uh, since I was five years old, I've always, white's always been my favorite color, even though it's not a color. Uh, so it's an optimistic tone, I that feel. And it's, it's, it references light, you know, it, it's definitely transparent in many ways, and it's uh, completely omitted in many ways, and um, at least maybe in my subjective understanding of it, uh, I went into rekindle within what light can hold, what, um, you know, surface can hold, uh, what an image can hold. So it, it, it was this similar, but then it became, I don't know, the one in the bottom right, I don't know if you can tell, it's like one of the last, last ones that I, that I finished, and it was, and the image is still there, and it, it's only like one image, and it's like part of the king mocha, and that definitely became a transition into the mocha, to the proper portraits, uh, but that, I don't know. I guess I, I regret faith in, in not so much the image and and and, and believing, but I gained faith in in the will to believe, or the will to process it, and and just um, yeah, or just I regain faith in just what is possible altogether, and at least white does that for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it's it, like just, uh, like fresh start. Like white, yeah. Ground, you know, it's the foundation to, to things and to a process of painting sometimes, you know, for people. So, um, it seems like those are really different to your philosophical proposition. It's like nothing you can see so far because it's too dark. Hey, speak up. <coughs> what? I can't hear you. What did you just get here? You can't hear me. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I feel like those are two different philosophical propositions. 
sure. I mean, I've always considered myself like whatever I'm doing. I'm like a very sincere like, artist altogether, and very honest. And um, so whatever I'm doing in, in ways that is, uh, really reflects my subjective ways of thinking and, and theoretical whatever, just anything. So uh, yeah, it, it definitely came to the whites of the matter were definitely my appreciation to like Nietzsche and Nihilism altogether, where it's not, it's not negative, it's not like not caring for shit uh, about everything or anything. It's more believing in, it's a like King Slate, not believing in the, in the cover of the book, it's just like believing in everything as a new thing, you know, and, and have, 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 have any growth and change. And, and that definitely was, I mean, I still believe in that, so it's to myself it's half Nihilist or whatever, but, um, but it definitely was You're sort of answering that question, but I guess, like, are you, what is your relationship to that history of value? Is it a questioning? Is there doubt there about that, that kind of value? Or is it a trying to redeem or transform that kind of value? Or trying to give it, like, a private sort of symbolic, like a personal kind of value that's different? I mean, it, um, how, how are you negotiating that conversation with yourself? Or how does the, because I mean, I, I I know, I know what you mean in using yeah. the goal, but then how does it end up feeling to you? Or? Um, well, I guess it's become, uh, become something else right now, and it's, it, it's become both of them all together. It's, it's become accessibility. 
accessibility to that value and, uh, and how accessibility? Sensibility. No, access accessibility. Accessibility. Yeah. Got it. And how the viewer, the subject, uh, on the painting or, it's, or, or yourself as a viewer uh, gathers that, gathers from it, you know, gathers gathers from these from, from these mediations of, of monochromes and, and I don't know, a value and the uh, hierarchy of um, so that accessibility is, is it's, it's, it's there and it's, it's optional if you want to give it or take and it's like any, any art if you want to receive it or not um, but I feel like with the PR and, and the press release and the song and the, the song reference that was my direct way of being um, accessible to some to song or to some reference Yeah, it's, it's open. Does that help? You know, and then there's this personal givens. I don't know. I guess the more we talk about this, the more I'm thinking, like, is there, is there something to be said about, you know, like, through, through these, these inversions of preciousness or of, 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 you know, like, presenting or hiding an image that, that there's something about, um, about these givens that's being questioned. You know, whether they be not just the sort of public givens of the function of painting or the position of painting, uh, its fixedness, um, but but also somehow like the internal givens, you know, like like um, like my relationship to mom shots or something, or, or my my subjective. You know, I guess when I first seen the show, I saw it much more accusatory, you know, like, like 
up against the wall. Like, uh, uh, and it was only when I sat here after the opening, and maybe it was after talking to Holly, or talking to some people that, that a sudden a positive light uh, came, came out of the show. But, uh, but I guess, you know, I guess, yeah, I guess I, I mean, maybe what I'm taking from what Molly's saying is, is uh, you know, it's like that, that you are performing some of these functions, whether they be personal givens or social givens. Uh, and then, you know, it's like, um, like what is the feeling there or something? Or what, is, uh, what does that mean or, or yeah, or like, how does that feel? How does that feel? You know, that's always my question. <laughs> like, um, like, does it yeah, feel haze? Does it feel haze? Like, does it feel performed? Or? Yeah, like, how, how much of a burden does it feel like? How does it, does it feel like a, like a, you know, like a, So you get that it feels heavy, but I think the heaviness is also part of the given, right? That, like, you're, you're dealing with these images and you're painting. You know, it's hard to, like, separate from the givens of that process. Like, Perfect. something that we could call Jesus is because, like, the process itself has already all these givens that seem to crowd out any any ability for him to, to have, like, like, an empathic response that he can genuinely call his and not part of the performance of giving with images in this way or something. Uh, that's why I'm thinking, oh, it's, it's not these givens here. I don't know, maybe I But even that, like, I feel like, I can tell clearly that they're from photographs, but I feel like there's a, there's a drawing process in them that's like a sort of movement away from the photographic and towards something mm -hmm. more fluctuating, something more expressive, like the line quality actually sort of starts to take on, you know, they, they're, they're somewhere in between. There's a lot of in-betweenness going on. And, like, they're somewhere in between this sort of, like, reproduction, you know, uh, representation and something much more It's a fine line, like, uh, I think I like that. It's a fine line and it's, it's a line. And, uh, I guess I'm anti-line altogether, because it creates, again, like, hierarchy and boundaries and sort of things. And the people that know me too, like, I like to, I don't like the names either, so I change my names constantly altogether, because that creates some kind of uh, mode of perception and categorizing altogether. There are both kinds of names. Titles? Or is Your name. names. Yeah. Okay. Um, so they are very personal, and, and I like that. I like that fine line of personal and that objective way of thinking. And, and I want the viewer to be placed in that sort of like in that trajectory of thinking of, of the way I think as well. Because I don't know, like it's it's definitely a very spiritual way of work of, of spiritual search for me, personal search at least. And then there's other tangible things within the self that we all have uh, that manipulate, manifest in, in various ways from. Uh, from emotions, of course, and I feel like I'm a very pragmatic, emotional guy. It's, it's an extreme, it's like, it's similar to the extreme to Chicago feel. Uh, but then my, I have a nihilistic mind where I'm completely really open it, not completely, really, but it's always a team state for me within viewing and seeing and hearing and sense perception, you know? Uh, so I, 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 in the process of making, I mean, in the process of installing, I guess my intentions were uh, that fine line. And it's not either or, it's both, and we're not both, I mean, more than both, you know? Because uh, it's always more, and not always, but I mean, it's, there's always a lot out there. Yeah, it seems like you're going to produce a line that's going to be Shh! Well, you're so loud, I, I'm like breaking the sound barrier. Too much contrast, and it would actually allow you to identify the real 
or and just like if you had categorical lines, because I don't know, just thinking of smoking gun as either like a celebrity mugshot or there's some like cutesy categorical thing. Um, but how how do you select them? Uh, the prettiest ones. What? The prettiest ones. The prettiest ones. Oh, this is perfect. Uh, no, well, I mean, I, of course, I, I went to like the some archive and um, the library and went through actual ones, you know, and it's pretty profound, you know, they're, they're wonderful. I, I always like one shots. Um, but for the smoking gun, it was just a, a, a form, it, just, it was just a source that was really uh, a strong array of people uh, from various crimes and, and this. Action or whatever. Um, so I wanted that array. I wanted a, a larger spectrum to to, to fuse that mind or that way of uh, judging or perception. Um, so it, it was just it was pretty. It was just easy. And they have really good stuff. And that was it. At least we found. Did you ever see Superman 2? Uh, the one with like, you know, before God, you know, yeah, they get caught in the mirrors. I mean, like, I don't know, there's something about the symbolism of like putting, you know, it's like putting somebody like, they're kind of buried in there. And something kind of like, um, you know, those guys are floating in space as a kind of like cosmic prison or something, you know, like a terrible curse. You <laughs> see the whole universe but within like a pane of glass or something. But there's something, uh, um, Again, it maybe goes back to the sentimental, you know, it's like, uh, not just the, the sentiment of, like, the touch of painting, again, like, given, right, like, um, or the sentiment of, like, painting a face, you know, like, again, just kind of given, but, um, uh, but maybe something a little bit darker, you know, it's like, uh, even, even in the, even in the optimistic ones of, um, I don't know, I mean, I guess it goes back to, to things we've said before about, but um, I wonder if there's 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 a slightly uh, uh, I think it goes back to what Molly was saying about how does it feel like you are performing in a sense like no I retract everything I said including the Superman no no the Superman has to stay yeah that was good but where is Don? You know, looking at these two things that seem to be maybe like opposed, but here in this conversation, I kind of feel like really fluidly moving um, in and out of the in there. And I just kind of how, like. I mean, the spiritual. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Yeah. yeah, spiritual, but also like, you know, thinking about the techniques of the state and then like using like spiritual terminology specifically to like, discuss that, or even like the way that you have to interact with the space and like the position of your body relative to like spatial, like the spatial relationship inside of like a church as opposed to like, you know, what are considered like more the tech, like spaces of the state, like the or something, you know? Yeah. Like being viewed as opposed to like being the viewer or like, you know, going to a space to have some kind of like transcendental experience or like, Um, so I don't know, I just am, I'm curious how you, what, how you feel about that, or like, you know, it seemed like you were like, I'm just thinking a lot about morals and ethics, or maybe like, screw ethics and like, let's think about morals, yeah, um, and like where that, where the spiritual fits in, you know, in these. For sure, I mean, I, 
I mean, even the state within, I think, uh, I mean, I, I feel like it's, it's both, like, this, a place and a space all together, and, um, so interesting because it can be a shorthand for like the heart and a shorthand for like the mind or a shorthand for the state. Like it has this kind of like ability to be a sort of abbreviated for a lot of things. At least I think that's that. I thought about a lot of things like what before when I was installing like it's just like memory which I've always never I thought about and never thought about but it's always there you know and it's like within the song it's the same thing it's like yeah it's the same thing it's like uh how, how memory, which is a finite thing, a finite recognition within a larger scope of things, and how does that perceive and influence one in the long run, you know? And, and how does that branch off into others? And, and yeah, that's, that's, that's a constraint. Fundamentally conservative, or is it fundamentally 
radical to talk about it in these ways, you know, to make these kinds of fudgings and to talk about the state and spirituality in the same. I mean, is this like, is there a kind of radicality or potential kind of radicality to that, like, bringing up these issues of subjectivity? I mean, you're just like, my emotions, it's just like, I think about it obsessively, like, I'm all, I'm sort of like, what are feelings and how do we deal with feelings? And, you know, just reading this thing and thinking a lot about jealousy. And, you know, there's this sort of analysis of jealousy, we can naturalize it, we can talk about it, it's just this new emotion that sort of comes up and it's, you know, you have to respect emotions because they just come out of nowhere. But, you know, this thing I'm reading describes, describes jealousy as something that's entirely about an attempt at control. So, like, okay, so it's not actually this crazy feeling that I'm having, it's like, no, I want control. So if I can eradicate my desire for control, then I don't need to feel this, this feeling. I mean, feelings have their own, their own logic as well. And, like, I don't know. I mean, I exist so much in a state of being pulled hither and thither by my own feelings, but I feel like they're not necessarily the best tool for for analysis. Even though they are, you know, sometimes my only tool. I'm <laughs> um, really empathetic to that plate. But I don't Conservative or radical? What do you think? What do you want? Do you want them to be apolitical? where we all sort of get kind of like about things. Like to think with them maybe we just like sort of a mud puddle, right? And now it's cloudy. Yeah, I mean I think that it, it, it is mud. It definitely will be mud. Like it, and it's I mean it was mud for me, that's why I worked on it for off and on for four years. Um, but that transparency, uh, like community, uh, yeah. became more clear and and, and becomes clear. But then again, it's muddled again, you know? So it, it's, it, that, I don't know, I accept that change, and it's always going to change, and, uh, and, and accepting whatever that, that change is, it's, it, it's another point, that it's, it's something, again, it's, I don't know, it's, um, it's, it's good, it's, I don't know, it's just back and forth, it's muddled, there it is, muddled, there it is. It's muddled, because it's poetics. Yeah. Like, all these things are sort of leveraged, right? It's very, I don't know. Themselves, you worked on them for four years, but have they themselves at the, at their completion point? Are they are they considered complete? I mean, because I think that that for me as, as material objects, like as they age, will they get increasingly yellow? Like that sort of um, that sort of insertion of, of this sort of the painting part of it, like sort of begins to trump all other parts in the poetics of painting material in a way that is mud, sort of like. Triumphs in some way, like, um, or, or are they? Are, are, are they changing? Uh, there's a few that would, that would change, uh, but I think that was purposely done, just because I did glazing in the wrong way, and I, I knew that. Um, so they will yellow more, so like that. But I think, again, that's me accepting, accepting that. And, uh, and back to the poetics thing, like it's 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 what is even culture that I kind of like always surfaces and always like lingers in, in my head and or my, around, around me that uh, I try, it's, it's questioning again that line or that distinction within uh, within the variables attached to quoting or culture, like what is, what is, what is selection, you know, uh, within, within culture, what is, you know, like it's just a choice and there's various, various choices to be done and anyone chooses whatever they want to do. Uh, and then there's also training, which is like a repetition in that process of things uh, within poetics and culture, and how, again, does that take to manifest within, within one individual? Um, 
So I, I constantly question that uh, within both that sense. And, and it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's always a reference. It's always a reference. This is a way in which saying it's polite doesn't really avoid the question. Doesn't avoid it or doesn't avoid it? Yeah, because you could still ask the same question about poetics, right? Like, what's their function where they would make it? There are certainly a radical poetics that concern this one. I just ask of you, I think it's a question that I ask of anything. You know, like, yeah. am, I have, am I having a radical or conservative feeling? You know, like, what am I... Well, that's so silly. I don't think it's silly at all. <laughs> I totally do. I think that, that applying radicality or conservatism to the is really silly. Really? Yeah, totally. Well, even, totally. If, even if, I mean, what, doesn't the radical thing have to do with the sort of nature of poetics so it's just more of a conflict between the two rather than... A range. So, so, like, so, so, because it's, yeah. it's a world construction. Or something. Yeah, <laughs> it might be world deconstruction, or it might be world construction, or it might be world preservation, or it might, you know, I mean, there's, there, are, there are values that are latent in things that, that affect whether, you know, whether you're able to think critically about something, able to detangle something, um, or whether you sort of continually cloak it in greater and greater sort of romance and smoke and mirrors and mystery, and by so doing, Make it impossible to take it apart or, or understand it, or right? I think it's just like a kind of. And that's what you're talking about. Because the empathy that he's all about is something that off-centers you, and that makes you think in an interesting way. Me? Am I, am I totally off topic? What's that? What did you say? Off-centers? Off-centers? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, never no, I, I, I thought we were talking about this. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's what we're talking about. Oh, okay. It's, it's also great. Like I, I think about like, well, at least for me, like when I'm reading a book, I completely like absorb fiction or non-fiction. I absorb that way of thinking, and so that kind of. I remember when I read the Odyssey for the first time. I was reading the newspaper, like in the same kind of sequence, in the same kind of stance, and like sort of rhythm of, of the Odyssey, you know. And that's like, and it's interesting how that works within various things, you know, and especially within art, you know, and within like. Heavy things or positions, you know, positions. So I don't know. It, it is offsetting, and it, but it's but it, it is variable, you know. And it's just it, you know, it's, it's there. It's a given. It's not a given. Yeah, I think reading is totally. It's like I think of like an inflected reading of like Nixon's diary or something. Like you can you can still read it in a way that you know it's like you're performing this function, you know, and all the words are there, and you're saying these words to yourself. But like you can still it can be it can be uh, oppressive and it can be liberating at the same time, or it can be it can be both because like through reading it you're like oh this guy's not you know or it's like by by behaving Nixonian like you can realize like the problems of whatever I don't need it's on Nixon, Nixonian you know but it's like if there's yeah I mean it, 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 there it, it, there's something about performing certain functions uh, in a way where I mean I think I get it, it goes back to these givens it's like how much do you then have to take these on and accept that these all are functioning right now or like how much can they sort of be just sort of like Occupied and 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 have a kind of like poetic or emotional current take place without one just completely crushing the other and saying no no, no there's no room for, for you here it's like that somehow again it's like it's the negotiation or, or what Charles is saying about there being this kind of like you know spectrum it's like by occupying a position you can sort of I don't know it's like think about think about writing or something more so than reading or being in character you know it's like you're 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 writing a good guy or you're writing a bad guy. And this, this ability to sort of like not just be performing the functions of good guy and bad guy, but also be performing the function of narrator, you know, the function of like the person that's actually seeing all these things performing against each other. And, 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 and you know, it's like, I mean, whether, whether the show functions to liberate or to imprison, you know, I think is precisely why the show is problematic for the viewer and for, and for Jesus as well or something. That's where... You know, I'm not, not, not saying that I've, I've understood the show or figured it out, but I mean, I think that that's kind of like where I'm finding the richness of the show is in this, you know, like, 
there's a lot of functions that Jesus is performing which I find unpleasant, you know? And then there's a lot of functions that he's performing that I find a little too optimistic, a little too hopeful. But, but somewhere in between there, there's, there's, there's a person whose agency I trust in, in this work and, and who I'm willing to see sort of like perform these functions, work through these functions, be the state, be not the state, be the redeemer, be the punisher, and, um, and, um, and somehow I still approach all of them with like, you know, I think like half nihilistic is great, you know, it's like a position where you're able to say like, well, listen, like, I don't need to necessarily adopt the stakes here just because I'm engaging with them. And then every once in a while, like being like, yes, I do because I'm engaging with them. So it doesn't necessarily have to weigh so heavily on me. I'm just doing this in this kind of like semi-detached way. Long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautifully done. Awesome. No, it's like, um, you know, if you're going to create this type of sort of, if your position is one of radical ambivalence, where does that fall in relationship to those terms? And I think it's exactly what you're saying. It's positional or constantly changing, just out of what's all in relational, right? Mm -hmm. As opposed to a fixed position. Well, it seems to be more of like a Cartesian. speechless as far as how to articulate the experience that I was getting and I kind of like that because um, I, 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 I far like I, I far more prefer things to sort of haunt me rather than to be explained to me you know and because uh, especially when we talk about poetics because poetics is like it's an aesthetic experience of course and it doesn't have the same could have similar functions, but it sort of doesn't, and that's sort of what I enjoy about the, the show, is that there were so many places that sort of wrapped around themselves and each other that left me with a, a, a muddled sort of you know, buzz through my head that I wasn't sure exactly, I mean, I could see the, I could see the source material, but, you know, whether or not the source material was alien. words people breaking in the schema disease.